the next plan was to try using some uh, mechanical parts. So usually I don't use mechanical parts, so it took a while to get to this point, but essentially I picked out some 632 screws and hex nuts and created a test part that would allow me to see the whole diameter just to make sure that the screw could fit into it well and um, also attach the nut onto it. So that was pretty cool. And then I ran a quick test print of the top piece to make sure that I could slide the nuts in and um, see that they would be able to stick with this overhang part. So that worked. And then I created the whole assembly, but now with the ability for the screws and hex nuts. So this is the very first try, and everything actually lined up for the first try, which is pretty impressive because when it comes to 3D modeling, um, uh, yeah, sometimes it can get a little tricky. So all of these pieces lined up the first try, it was pretty exciting. And then there were just, um, at this point, it's really sturdy and it's probably the design that we're going to end up using. So, um, from this point it was just a few tweaks and adding some more things to it. So, for example, on this next try, this is actually try number 10. <laughs> if you've been counting. Uh -huh. um, so, first of all, I created a little test to see um, the size of the nut, uh, how it would be able to fit in to something like this, and it turned out to be the uh, outer diameter plus 0 0.5 millimeters. And then, so now, um, these are just really quick test prints, or as quick as possible. It still takes a, pr a, a long time-ish to print these all out on the printer. But essentially, these ones are just testing the various uh, sizes and dimensions. As you can see here, I added in the top screw for that piece, whereas in this one it didn't have it, so it was like, not durable right there. And also added in some more space for the nuts up here. And also they're sort of extruded in the way that they can just slide in and fit there. Oh, and also, <laughs> obviously, the ball and sockets are back, but for this time it's just for decoration purposes, so that you'll be able to print out a customized faceplate and just stick it right onto here, and that will make it look even cooler. And same thing for this side, same thing for the top side, um, the bottom, no, because you won't really need it there. Oh. And, of course, as you can see here, on the bottom are ball and socket joints, and these would be for um, the legs, possibly. And there's a little notch taken out of them so that it would be able to slide and then sit down. <laughs> and uh, here's what the first link of the leg would look like. I've never tested this yet before, so... This is actually from test 11, which is not entirely finished printing yet, so yeah, it looks like there's some work to do with that. <laughs> and here is the progress of test number 11. So the differences here are that there's more space for the hex nuts to slide in, it's a little bit more extruded this way, and um, Lots more better stuff, like more reinforcements for these pieces, so it makes it harder for them to uh, chip off, basically. Um, hex nut holder, well, that one was there the last time as well. Uh, this one improved in the same way, so more space for the hex nut to slide in. And... Yeah, basically that's all it... actually, that is all it. <laughs> so... That was all of these tests leading up to this point. Let's take a look at what the model looks like on the computer. 
So right now I'm running Autodesk Inventor 2013 and this is what the assembly file looks like. So here's where all of the separate pieces uh, can be put into one main file where you can move them around and see how they all line up and everything. So you can see here I have all of my pieces, side piece, everything. And this comes in pretty handy sometimes for miscalculations of when you're like, oh, should this tab be plus three millimeters or plus six or whatever? So it comes in pretty handy. Now, looking at the individual pieces, here's the top part. So this would be mounted on the top um, area, top side of the rack piece. <laughs> And so, here you can see, that's where the hex nuts go, and let's see it from this side, there's supports there, the ball and sockets go slightly through sometimes, and let's see here, in sketch mode we can see this is the main shape, so from the top down then, this whole rectangle gets extruded by three millimeters, as we can see here with this extrusion. And then on, add on to that, and that's uh, like six millimeters plus six millimeters. And then uh, to add on for the screw and hex nuts, uh, this is in a separate sketch created along that just extruded face. And so there's two of these, and those can just be mirrored twice around, makes it a lot easier. Then here we're extruding the hole in the middle, which is nice, saves some plastic filament. Um, so, uh, let's see here, just even more extrusions, a lot of mirrors for those pieces. And for creating the sockets on this face, what I had to do was go into the first sketch and define a point, and that point was along this construction line, which is at uh, five, five millimeters out from the edge, and same thing for the uh, opposite, uh, or perpendicular side to it, uh, for the ball and sockets, or for the sockets. And so I define a work plane that is parallel through that point. Actually, it's right through that point, which is good. And then from there, I can create a sketch that's on there. And so let's see if we can view um, slice graphics. There we go. So here we can see that this is where the ball or the sockets are. And essentially, it's just a half circle. And then from there, what we do is, with the half circle, we revolve it around that half, or that dividing line of the uh, circle, and then um, it gets cut away from this, uh, the other extruded pieces. That happens, same thing for the other sockets, and that's it. So that's basically a pretty good overview of what all of the pieces are like. So you can see here, basically you already know what's happening with this leg piece. Here are the other pieces with the uh, sockets for the legs. This is the front, so as we can see, let's see here, see here, pretty cool. The side, so the side for the servo, um, what, what I did was I actually just took the same piece that's from RoboBird and um, this is actually just a block so it's pretty easy to copy and paste it. And it basically gets extruded with a, a boundary around it, everything like that. I try to always do my mirrors in, in the 3D model mode, so that way the sketches aren't as cluttered. And then last
last but not least is this part and this part is pretty simple <laughs> and then we're back to the assembly again